The book of Romans, chapter 6, is where I wanted to start with. I was a bit amused and chuckling in this sense. I like the idea here, Brother Mike, with that ukulele. And who's over here just holding the guitar? I can do that. <laughs> huh? Well, neither can I, but I can hold the guitar. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, I thought... I thought, I can do that. We can do that at Magnolia. <laughs> that one was a little bit rough for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. No, mine, those. Oh. Oh boy! Yeah, mine was uh, start at the 200 yards and move on back all the way to a 500 yard. And <laughs> I love them positions well. <laughs> oh boy! Now I was uh, considering the Lord said on my mind this item, and the saddest part about it is how many so-called religious churches don't even teach their congregation, and you'll hear someone say this at least once, if not more. I have liberty in the Lord. And yet they're cussing up a storm, right. getting drunk as drunk can be, and out fishing on the river on a Sunday when they should be in the congregation of the Lord. Right. Oh, you ever see that? Yes, How often? Simplest way to put it, it's too often. Now, uh, I looked at it, and I was going to read a portion of uh, chapter 6 of Romans, and I was debate pretty well stay within Romans of that chapter and go along with uh, portions of it. Yep, I have liberty in Christ. And the saddest part of it is this. <laughs> I already know, in this sense, I've been to one or two churches to visit here in Walterboro, and that same statement is there. That shame should be on the preacher, because that preacher isn't teaching the word of the Lord Jesus Christ the way he ought to, and pe people, and it'll be mostly men. That'll use that I have liberty in Christ. Now, I'm not saying women won't do it, but I'm around men more, so you get to hear that mess. And part of it, you find is uh, the reason, in this sense, what is liberty? You ever ask yourself that question? You say you have liberty in Christ. What is that liberty? Does that liberty within Scripture shows restrictions? Or is it just a free-for-all, ignoring the Scriptures? Definitely it is not a free-for-all. Right. Now... An example, let me use it. I'm going to pull this thing out of my back pocket if I can get it out in this sense. I'll use a couple. One of them here, this thing, what is, it, what is that? Bro? It's a what? The, is that a permit for me to drive any which way I want on the road? I'm restricted, aren't I? Well, if I'm restricted with that one, oh boy, oh boy, boy. How about this one? Some people know I carry this thing, some people don't. 
What is that one? Does that mind? Does that mean I have liberty to use my weapon on anyone at any time I feel like it? There's restrictions, aren't they? Then why is it people don't have enough common sense that claim to be Christians to know <laughs> your liberty in the Lord Jesus Christ is not to abuse, but rather to magnify Jesus Christ? Now, how so? I have liberty to witness to others about the Lord Jesus Christ? Does that hinder the Word of God by doing so? Am I hindering the Word if I go to witness to an individual of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yet, I have a liberty to do that, do I not? According to the scriptures. How about Paul? <laughs> Did he have liberty? Now, here's a little thing uh, that you mentioned that uh, caught my ear when you were mentioning about a sister in Christ praying to have someone come so she could witness to him for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I looked at it and I wondered this. I wonder if Paul ever fell into that trap that the uh, devil puts up in this sense. I'm praying that people, that not, people just don't want to hear. They don't want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What am I doing wrong? Why didn't Paul cry that within Romans? What am I doing wrong? I'm talking to these people, witnessing to these people. No, it's not you. It's the hearer as to whether they receive it, the word of God, or reject it. Never you, just as with Paul or any other saint. You're doing what the Lord wants to begin with. Be a faithful witness. Sow that word. Water that word. But who, who, who does the Lord say bring forth the abundance? We can't bring it because we're nothing but miserable flesh sinners without any righteousness of our own. And yet, within the congregations within this place called Walterboro, people think they have all that righteousness to have liberty to do what they want. It boils to a simple question. Do you truly know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or are you another Judas? You play church, you act church, you talk church, but your true heart's desire is the flesh, the lust of it, and all the wickedness thereby. All right, here's... Um, some examples. Go to Second Peter chapter two. And we'll go there for a moment. Second Peter in chapter two. Are you there? Sure. All right. Now, what does verse eighteen say? Did you see it? For when they, who's the they? Oh, how many of them we have behind so-called pulpits within this nation alone? You can call them a, a Benny Hinn to lay eggs or whatever else. Because they lie and are after their own lust, a prophet. When they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. 
while they promise them what? Liberty? Wow. In what way? <clears throat> I hope I got the winning numbers to the lottery this week. And yet, that's contrary to the word of God. How about, the, oh, it's a nice day today. I sure hope I get my limit on them fish today. Well, wait a minute. The Lord said unto Peter and the other, they'd make them fishers of men. He didn't say to go fishing on his day. Did it? No. And to add to it while they're doing it, <laughs> I'll take a case of bud with me. That way I can sit and relax. Really? Sit and relax for what? To catch them fish. Oh, you by yourself? Oh, no. The preacher's with me today. Really? Wait a minute. Who's preaching at the church? Oh, the preacher had some substitute guy come in. Is there one of the members there? Oh, no, he's just a visitor. You know nothing about this person? Oh, no. We got liberty in Christ to have whoever can come on up here and say what they want rather than the scriptures of the Lord God Almighty. Great swelling words. Oh, boy. For of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. Bondage to who? <laughs> the devil. Because you're not willing to do as the Lord says. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Right? Not to impress men. I'm not here to impress nobody. I am a nobody. By the grace of God, he allows me to use this tongue in his glory, not my own. I'm nothing but a saved sinner by the righteousness of God Almighty himself. So this I know. <laughs> I am restricted with what liberties I have in the word of God. In the word of praising Jesus Christ and knowing all my righteousness is as filthy rags. Well, what else? Let's go to Acts 15. Chapter 15 of Acts. And watch these things here. I'm going to uh, begin with verse 1 and go on over a couple verses. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Accept ye what? Be circumcised after the manner of Moses. Ye cannot be saved. Whoa, whoa, you mean for me to be a Christian, i got to get circumcised? No, but if you don't speak in tongues, you ain't going to get it either. I'm not, no. Well, how many churches claim to believe in Christ and push that nonsense? Or I've even, where Mom and I one time, this was a, I won't mention the Baptist Church of Buford. Some of you might know it. In order to be a member there and be considered saved, you had to get dipped in their pool. Yeah, this is many, many moons ago. Literally. And just to make sure folks came for Wednesday night prayer, <laughs> we have spaghetti night. And you know what even made it worse? Yeah. Yeah, spaghetti night on a Wednesday. You have, we're here for a little bit of prayer, but then we'll go eat. Oh, that French toast, that spaghetti, and a little bit of salad. Now, there, 
Well, that's exactly a portion. And they're not alone. They are not alone. And people are going there, and you know what they've learned? Just for a Wednesday evening, Bible study and prayer night. I hope they don't eat up all the spaghetti because the rest of it didn't come. They heard nothing. They weren't interested in anything at all and end up with, <laughs> I have liberty in Christ. Hey, that could be a Sunday morning. How? <laughs> we have breakfast before we have any church. Grits, eggs, toast, bacon, sausage, a little bit of gravy to go on that there biscuit. Yeah. And that's exactly what the people are coming for. That individual that's up there, he'll end up giving a little sermon at right. while the Christianettes are sucking up on the cigarette. Well, what, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? You mean I can't suck up on a cigarette there? What testimony does it give? To another person that doesn't know Jesus Christ yet. Right. Oh, it's okay. I can do what I want. Rather than to abstain right. from an appearance of evil. That's what it is. No, you don't have liberty. I don't have liberty. The Lord has shown us how we are to speak, how we are to act, and even to the very thing of how should I witness to this person? Because the Lord knows their heart far better than me. All I can do is make a presumption of it. Okay? The Lord says, you let me put my words in your mouth because I know their heart. And it seems strange at times, but I know it's so because I've had it happen with me more than once. I'm wondering to myself, I wonder how these folks are going to do. What are they going to say? What are they going to react to? The Lord says, he already knows. So the liberty I have is this, obedience unto him. Not to myself. And start mouthing off all kinds of craziness. And say, yep, I witnessed to them. <laughs> well, the question is, what did they receive? Now watch, over in uh, Acts uh, 1 and verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. You want a portion of that? Go to the book of Malachi. Ye must tithe 10%. Ye've robbed God because you haven't. Wait a minute. I'm not under the law. Right. Then why are you trying to tell me to be under the law when I'm to be under grace? The Lord shows even within the scriptures the fact of giving and tithing unto the church, the necessities of it. Why to give? To the very fact of your own heart of what you're doing. Yet, I've got liberty. How so? Oh, I'll give if I feel like it. I don't feel like giving today. I just don't like what the preacher's saying. That's not the purpose of giving. Because of what the preacher says. If that preacher is preaching the word of God in spirit and truth, <laughs> it's you having trouble with the Lord, not with the preacher. Because the preacher is in obedience to what the Lord said on his heart. Besides, like you said before, who's paying for the lights? Oh, wow, who's paying for that AC? There's a necessity of it. But at the same time, 
The Lord said he loveth a cheerful giver. One, you give from your heart, not your pocketbook. <clears throat> now watch here. We'll jump over to verse uh, 29 of that same chapter of Acts. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Wait a minute, what do you mean from blood? Huh. I've, I've never actually gone deer hunting, but some of the stories I hear, your first kill has the heart and blood. Mm. Now, I'm not one of them type of folks. I'll eat, I'll eat deer in a heartbeat, but I'm not going to be sucking up all that blood just because, ooh, it's my first kill. That's contrary to the Lord. He said to abstain from it be it any animal. And yet, what does a religious group may say? I stopped at one church here in town out of curiosity. Oh, there were so many trucks out there. And there were so many individuals gathered up and had their rifles. And not one not one asked what was my purpose of coming. That was complete. Ignore, ignore him, ignore him. He's not one of us. Really? Well, according to the Lord, are ye not of the body? Do you profess Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior? Well, how in the world are you going to ignore any part of your body? I mean, some folks already know this thing gets to rumbling. You ain't not ignoring. You're going. Or you say, I love Jesus. And yet you're running out enjoying the entertainments of the world contrary to Jesus Christ. I have liberty. Not like that. Bye. Not like that. Well, how about over in, uh, oh, here we go, Galatians chapter 3. Hopefully you'll get to see a little bit of this. Now, Galatians, we see these words in verse 1 on, O foolish Galatians. What? O foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? How many churches? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I can still do what I want in the world and call it I have liberty in Christ. Wow, how so? Well, one church says, look, as long as you come once a week, kneel down in that little cracker box, and that person behind the curtain, and you cry, forgive me, Father. Well, I've sinned again. Really, the last time I sinned, the last time I confessed was 22 hours ago, or some other foolishness like that. Yes, it does happen. I'm sure some can hold witness to that. Or even to the fact of, as they say, speaking in tongues. If you don't speak, you're not saved. You don't have the Holy Spirit of God. If you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you're most miserable. Why? Because you're none of his. That's why. Ye must be born again. And with that, there are commitments. 
There are things that the Lord expects you to get rid of and to give up. You can run anywhere you want and claim to be a Christian. But when a lost person, any lost person, sees you sucking up that bud, sucking up that wild turkey, or going with them to Hooters, yeah, tell them you're a Christian. And see, just like that little painting next door, hypocrite. You either are a Christian desiring to serve Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or you're nothing but a fleshy, lost individual trying to make people think you're something you're not and cry, I have liberty. Now, oh foolish Galatians, huh? That is pretty rough. Especially if you do profess Jesus Christ. And you may be saved and have gotten saved. And then get caught up with the foolishness of the world again. Paul, within Acts, he says, your blood be upon your own heads. Because people rejected it. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The witness of Jesus Christ. My question is simply this. How much blood is upon you for claiming I have liberty in Christ and the lost world rejects you because of it? How are you going to witness to them when they see you doing what they do? And you cry, you're going to hell. You're going to hell to burn. Hey, but you know you don't have to. Accept Jesus into your life. What? That's kind of dumb, isn't it? He didn't say to accept Jesus into your life. But rather you being in the Lord Jesus Christ's life. Which means you walk different. You talk different. You act different. Instead of like they say, you quack like a duck. Walk like a duck, you must be a duck. Right. It's the same way if you claim Jesus Christ and people see it. Right. Hypocrite. Right. No, we don't have liberty in the sense of the world. I have liberty in Christ and going to a church and playing church and yet, not being as the Lord would want you to be. It bugs me, it bothers me, because I know sometimes I say stupid stuff. In this flesh, all you can do is try to bite your tongue and say, you idiot. That's what I call me. <laughs> you blew it. How are you going to witness to them folks now? You understand? That's why even the Lord chose us to watch our very speech. And the devil's out there messing with your mind. And then you see the words. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Really? Well, how did you fall into that trap? Simple. We let the flesh have its way. And we wonder why Paul even cries, oh, wretched man that I am. Huh? Because he knows this flesh is a troublemaker. And worse when we let it have its way. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even as we have believed in Jesus Christ, 
that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Oh, I have liberty. No, you don't. You're abusing the very word of God right. to hide your own guilt. A guilt that shouldn't be there to begin with if you claim to be saved and if you are saved. Now, don't misunderstand me. I cannot look upon your heart. Jesus Christ does that. All I can go by is by actions, even with myself. But I also know, know this. <laughs> Some of you guys are very good con artists. And the proof of it is even with Judas. Right. Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is. How many cried? Lord, is it I? Right. Why would you even ask yourself that question? If you knew the Lord Jesus Christ to begin with. Search the scriptures. For they are they which testify of me. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Hey, Peter, nod on over. Ask the Lord, who is it? Whoa, you mean Peter didn't doubt? Even though he got in trouble a lot? Yeah. He was fully aware. <laughs> he was a child of God. Thou art the Christ. It's rough when people doubt who Jesus Christ is in their life. And then go get messed up and say, I have liberty. We don't. Our liberties are restricted within the words of God. Be it old or new. He said, all of it is profitable. All of it. There's a lot of things in the old we've seen that people mess up and abuse that liberty. <laughs> and at the same time, we see the judgment of God upon it. Part of that? Mm. If you are not chastised of the Lord, then you are what? You know, that's one verse I look at a lot, especially if I screw up. Whether or not I am going to get chastised. And it's a great, great indicator for yourself. As well as the fact the Lord, examine yourself whether or not what? Oh, you mean whether or not I got all that liberty to do what I want? That's contrary to the word of God. Right. First Peter in chapter 2, we'll look at this in First Peter chapter 2, because a lot of folks do this craziness. Now, notice this, verse 16, well, we'll back up, let's see, 216 is what I want, but was rebuked. Who was rebuked? That was a crazy prophet, wasn't he? Balaam? Huh. And shown the fact of this in 17, that they are welled without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Oh, I know what I just did. I pulled one of my instructors. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
Okay. I did say 2.16, did I not? But that's in First Peter. Isn't it great to know, even if you're up here and you flub your dub, that the good Lord will have someone to say, hey, back up. <laughs> I'm in First Peter chapter 2 right now, verse 16. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as, but as the servant of God. There's an individual I used to work for. I won't mention his name. But he used to uh, use a portion of the scripture in John. Ye shall love the truth. And the truth shall what? He abused that by not paying taxes and other stupid things. Because the government's not truthful. That's not what the scriptures were saying. Right. And that's how people do the same thing in so-called pulpits. They abuse the word of God to such a point. The congregation is confused and don't fully understand. Your liberty is to glorify God, not to abuse. Works of the flesh in Galatians 5. Is that where my liberty goes? Chapter 5, verse 9. Here we go again. I did it, didn't I? 519. Galatians. 513. Okay. Oh, 519 is where I want. Even though 513 is there. Amen? But we'll read them both. Verse 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. <laughs> That's pretty rough. If you call and say, I have liberty in Christ, and there's no love toward your own brothers and sisters in Christ to such a point when the need be is to give the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but what? The truth does hurt. Amen. Especially when you're the one guilty. What do I do? Run or get on my knees and ask the Lord? to forgive and strengthen me to such a point a need to confess my fault to another brother or sister that I may have offended. And we go again to verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Whoa! I have liberty? Yeah. I can go to the IMAX and watch all this R-rated trash that the world puts out, and it's okay. I'm a Christian. Hey, I can go to the country and Western Bar. I have liberty. Huh? Yeah. Isn't that great? But that's how foolish people are because they're believing a liar, a false prophet, a deceiver, the devil's minister, rather than doing as they should. 
search the scriptures yourself as to whether or not them things are true. Now, let's close with this uh, portion of scripture in the book of Romans. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. And verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. As hard as it is to understand at times, <laughs> the Lord still gives you a choice to serve him or be a hypocrite. But when you have in your mind and in your heart that judgment seat of Christ that's an awful lot to answer for that you didn't have to answer for in the flesh the Lord says we have liberty but our liberties our liberties my liberty is to glorify Jesus Christ and not let this flesh have its way. War! War! Yeah, we're in a war. The Lord showed us that. But in that war, that doesn't mean I sit back on my butt and do nothing. I'm supposed to be fighting for the Lord the same as you. And not making excuses. <laughs> Just like a little bit of mention last night. Adam and Eve. <laughs> it's her fault. She made me do it. No, it's your fault because you went ahead and did it. Own up to it. Part of the training of the military, I'll use the Marine Corps, is this. You're in charge of a platoon, a squad. You're in charge of a group of men, and you instruct them what they do. Something gets messed up. It's your fault because you didn't oversee it the way you should have. You decide, go ahead and do it. I'm going to be down at the club. Wrong. It doesn't work that way, does it? You're the one that has to oversee it. And by the grace of God, you're doing it to his glory. Whether therefore you eat, drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Holy Father, thank you for this moment of time you allow that we can share a portion of thy word. I know, Lord, it's not all of it, and just a tidbit of it. But please, Lord, let it be enough that others would at least search even further to realize our liberty is to glorify you, not to make it a cloak of maliciousness, of wickedness. And Father, when people see that we love you and desire to serve you. If they don't know you, they would at least know where to go. If it's not to ourselves, but to another that claims you. Thank you, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.